Jai Shri Shri Guru Garanga Gandharvi Ki Giridhari Radhika Raman Giriju Ki Jai Jai Arada Madhava Kunja Bihari Arada Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Janapalava Givan it Hari Gopi Janapalava Givan it Hari Yasoda Nanchana Braja Jana Ranchanan Yasoda Nanchana Braja Jana Ranchanan Jamuna Tira Banachari Tira Banachari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Janabalava Givan it Hari Gopi Janabalava Givan it Hari Yashoda Nanjana Braja Jana Ranjanan Nanjana Braja Jana Ranjanan Jamuna Tira Banachari Jamuna Tira Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Janabalava Givan it Hari Gopi Janabalava Givan it Hari Yasoda Nanjana Braja Jana Ranjanan Yasoda Nanjana Braja Jana Ranjanan Jamuna Tira Banachari Jamuna Tira Banachari Jai First of all, I'd like to offer my heartfelt Puspanjali to the lotus seat of my Harinam Diksha Guru, our Srila Prabhupada. Second of all, I'd like to offer my heartfelt Puspanjali to the lotus seat of my Bhajan Shiksha Guru, Srila Gurudev, Bhaktivedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj, and to Srila Bhakti Vigyan Bharati Goswami Maharaj, and to our entire Guru Parampara, especially to Srila Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur and his Madhurya Kadambani and also to Kartik Devi or Jai Shri Shimati Radhika. Her yeah. month is coming. Yeah. So we've been speaking a little about preparing for Kartik. And we're now in the final, last week, no, last half of the sec third month of Chaturmasya. Yeah. And so, of course, the fourth month is Kartik. So we're preparing for this, because this is the most special month, as we know. It's a month of Shimati Radhika, or Jai Kartik Devi, Shimati Radhika. And this month is meant, and the whole Chaturmasya, actually our whole sudden bhajan, not just during Chaturmasya, not just, not just during Kartik, but our whole life, now that we've come to bhakti, bhakti yoga, is meant to attain our seva to Srimati Radhika, for the pleasure of Srimati Radhika, to learn how to please her, to learn how to serve her, to attain our original uh, swarup, which is there in our atma. That's what our whole sudden bhajan is about. And kartik time is a time when we get so much mercy, extra mercy from Srimati Radhika, extra mercy. So we've talked about some of the rules and regulations now today I wanted to talk a little bit about what the practice is that we always practice during Karti. And of course that the first and foremost is to hear Harikata. Harikata, especially from Satguru and Sat Vaishnavas. 
We hear the Harikata and we hear the Harikata not just letting it go in one ear and out the other. But we really try and seriously hear Harikata so it goes in our ear and goes into the heart. And it stays in the heart and then it can come out through our mouth. And we can also repeat the Harikata and it will come into our mind so we can remember the Harikata and we can practice it. Now, Srila Prabhupada has said the words of the Guru, of Sri Guru, he was very beautifully said, we should meditate on them, we should worship them, and we should carry them out to the best of our ability. Now, we're not so qualified, but we try to the best of our ability, and we want to be able to carry them out very well. So just that desire to want to be able to carry them out is perfect, actually. But doesn't mean that we shouldn't try even though we're not so qualified. We should try very hard to follow them very well. And when we can't, well, we, oh, please, please, help me, help me, empower me to be able to carry them out so I can please you, Sri Guru. And our Guru is in the line, as we know, of Rupa Goswami, who's the maid ser the head of all the maidservants of Srimati Radhika. So this is we're getting trained here first. What are the moods? What are the moods of a Rupa Nuga Gaudiya Vaishnava? What are their activities? And we learn that through Sri Guru, through Upadesha Amrita, Mana Shiksha, all their teachings. Ukalika Valari, Vilap Kushmanjali, like this. What are the external moods, the external activities, the internal moods, like this? And we try to follow them the best. And when we can't, please help me, please empower me. Because I can't, I really can't. I'm a fall, I'm a tiny, insignificant fallen soul. I, I don't have the capacity. So you please bestow your chit ball. That means transcendental strength, transcend, transcendental power upon me so that I'll be able to um, follow your instructions and carry them out and I'll be able to somehow please you. Yes. So, so the heart guitar is for this. And... Uh, uh -huh. Okay. So also, kirtan. Harinam saying kirtan. Kirtan with like-minded devotees for the pleasure of Sri Guru Garanga and Gandharvika Giridhari. And we sing the appropriate kirtan. So what's the most important kirtan for Karti? Dhamma Dharastika. We sing this every single day. It's the tradition of the Gaudiya Vaishnavas, isn't it? In fact, they sing it twice a day. They sing it in the morning and the evening, mm -hmm. but at least once a day. We sing Dhamma Durastikam. And then in our line, we sing Munindra Vinda Vandite, Namami Nanda Nanda Nanda, so many of the prayers and the kirtans for the pleasure of Srimati Radhika and begging for her mercy and begging for the mercy of Krishna so that he will request Srimati Radharani to give us her mercy. Because it's all for her mercy. And of course that is so that she will engage us in the service of Krishna. Allow us to assist her in her service to Krishna. Like this. And so then also we have Harikata, we have Kirtan, and then what is so unique about Karti? Is that this is when the Gaudiya Vaishnavas do Braj Mandal Parikama. It's traditional. Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur did it. All of the Acharyas, everyone's done it. Rupa and Sanatana, they were going everywhere. Ha Radhe, Rajade, Vike, Jalalite, He Nanda Sunokuta, Shri Govarda, Nakalpa Pada Patale, Kalindi Vanye Kuta, Goshanta Vitisarvita, Vijapati, K Dharmaha, Vande Rupa Sanatana, Shijiva Gopa. So they were going everywhere. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Like this, of course, they're Siddha. So easily they would have darshan. <laughs> Even though they were feeling so much separation, they were also uh, going into their internal consciousness very easily. For us conditioned souls, it's not so easy. No, not so possible. So what is recommended? Recommended that we go with the Pranayi Bhaktas. That's the pure devotees. Right? The Rasic devotees, Vraj Rasic devotees. And that's of, there's, there's the Uttamadikaris, the Majjim, like this. So sometimes maybe 
the Uttamadhikaris are not present before us, but they're always present. That's why we do our pranams before our parikama. And we call on, like for myself, I call Srila Prabhupada, Bhaktivedanta Swami Maharaj, please, please be with me, lead me on this parikama, manifest you know, the glories of Vrindavan Dham to me, like this, Bhaktivedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj, Bhakti Vaibhav Puri Goswami, all this, please, you be, you're here, lead this parikama, like that. Let me remember your instructions. And so they can come, they come with us, if we're conscious like this. And we hear their harikata. We remember it. And then what else? The kirtan, the stavan sutta. We offer prayers. We don't just hear the pastimes in the places, but we also offer prayers. Each place we go, we offer prayers, right? But there's something else that's extremely important. And that is to pray to the dust. The dust of every place. The dust of Vrindavan. And not in a proud way. And not so everyone can see us thinking, oh, just see what kind of devotee I am. We should roll in the dust. Srila Narayan Maharaj has said that. Sanat Goswami is Brihat Bhagavatam Rita. Prabodhananda Saraswati Thakur and his Vrindavi Mahimamrita. We should actually roll in the dust. But we should do it in a humble way. Mostly it's best that we do it where no one can see us. Because if we do it where people say, so I'll just see me, I'm rolling in the dust. <laughs> you know? Aren't I a good devotee? Aren't I humble? like this. So we have to be very careful because we want to be awakening this mood of humility like this in our heart and keeping our minds focused on Srimati Radhika and not on what other, other devotees will think of us. We don't want that to come in. That's not favorable for us. And one reason why it's so favorable to roll in the dust is I don't know if you remember but in Brihad Bhagavatamrita of Sanat Goswami. At the end of the Brihad Bhagavatamrita, of the first part. Now, if you remember in the first part of Brihad Bhagavatamrita, Narada Muni is going to all the devotees. He goes from Bhishma, the Pandava, Shiva, up, up he goes. He's looking for who is the recipient of Krishna's mercy? Who's the most uh, beloved of Krishna? Who receives the most mercy? And finally, 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 we go through so many pastimes you know, we find that it's the gopis in Srimati Radhika. And he's caused so much pleasure to Krishna, even though Krishna has fainted in ecstasy. The, the pastime of New Vrindavan, Nava Vrindavan is there. And Narada is feeling quite uh, distressed. He's thinking, oh dear, I've caused Krishna so much trouble. And so I've caused him anxiety because, you know, the separation from the Brajbasis. But actually Krishna is very pleased. And he says, no, remembering my dear most devotees is the greatest pleasure. So I want to give you a boon. And so he, Narada Muni actually asked for three boons. The first two are for himself. But the last boon he asked for, which is very beautiful, he says, um, May those who even once faithfully narrate or hear your Vraj Leela or touch the places where you have performed those pastimes, may they attain prem bhakti for your lotus feet, which are tinted by the kumkum from the gopi's breasts. And then what happens? Krishna, it doesn't say Krishna, he says, then Gopinath, who is actually the Adhistatri Devata of Prem, of Prayojan. Gopinath, not Madan Mohan, not Govind, but Gopinath. He's the one in, you know, Praying Prayojan, like this. So then it says that Gopinath raises his hand, and what does he say? He blissfully says, so be it. So be it. So we have the benediction from Gopinath, that if we hear and narrate these Brajlila, and if we touch the dust, Prem Bhakti will arise in our hearts. Srila Bhaktivedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj would always remind us of this. So we should not be careless about this. We should not take it lightly. We have the human form of life. This is very, very rare. We won't go into that. We all know it's very rare. The example is given that if one, a turtle is swimming in the Pacific Ocean, which is 
you know, from the material point of view, practically unlimited, right? And it's a small turtle swimming. And all of a sudden it comes up for air. And it just happens to come up. There was just this log floating, and the log had a hole in it. Just anywhere in the position. And the turtle comes up with its head through the hole. How that is so rare. That's how rare it is to get a human form of birth. So we shouldn't take it lightly. It's a qualification we need to be able to practice bhakti yoga. What to speak of bhakti, to practice it, to attain our goal, which is prem. And prem seva, to attain darshan and seva to Sri Radha and Krishna. To assist Srimati Radharani in her seva to Krishna. Because for us, we're serving Jugo Kishore in that capacity, like this. So this opportunity, especially, of course, we can go anytime to the places. We can hear Harikata anytime. We can do Kirtan anytime. But especially in Braj, as we know, Rupa Goswami said, that's the essence of all advice. Be in Braj with your body and your mind and your soul, with everything. And if you can't, then definitely wherever you are around the world, make your heart and mind Vrindavan. And everyone should go on Braj Mandal Parikama. And if they can't do it in person, they should do it in their mind. They should read the Brajmanda Parikama book. They should go on Brajmanda Parikama. They should meditate on the places, on the pastimes, the Harikata, the Kirtan, rolling in the dust, praying to the dust. Especially now we see in Karti. Because Srimati Radharani, she is so merciful. She's so merciful. In the second part of Brihad Bhagavad Tamrita, we see how merciful is she. As we know, she was in Braja Vrindavan, spiritual, Goloka Vrindavan, Gokul Vrindavan, right? And she wanted Gokumar to come. And he's a fallen conditioned soul. So she arranges for him to take birth in Govardhan. She arranges for his spiritual master, Jayanti, to come. It was actually Krishna himself. She arranges so many things. And so finally, finally, he attains his spiritual perfection and he goes back. And then not only that, we hear later in the second part that Gop Kumar is telling his disciple, Jana Sharma, that, oh, he's telling him all of his pastimes, you know, everything that happened. And he puts his hand on his head and he attains praying. And what does he say? He said, Srimati Radhika sent me here sent me here for you. And I get more pleasure out of following her uh, instructions than even out of performing my pastimes with Krishna as a cowherd boy. How merciful. She's Prem Guru. Prem Guru. She's Karuna Mai, Kripa Mai, Shimati Radhika, like this. And we're in the line of her intimate maidservants. They can give. So just like she's merciful, she, Guru, and these Rupanuga Vaishnavas, they're so merciful. They want so much to help us become purified of all of our nartas, to remove the anartas, to bestow what? Nishta, Ruchi, Ashakti, Bhav, and finally Prem. This is what they want. So we should take advantage of Karti. Just like when we take advantage of Janmastami, Radhastami, Ikadasi, Madhavatiti Bhakti Janani, Kadasi Devi Ki Jai Ho. You know, Kartik Devi is like that. So, no matter where we're at, and even if our body isn't, if we're in Braj and our body isn't so, so strong, we do the best we can. But we try and take advantage. Go one place and roll in the dust. <laughs> Pray to the dust. I can tell you a nice pastime. Years ago, it was in the early 90s, I was still in ISKCON, and three of my friends, my girlfriends, early in the morning, and things were different then, things were much more peaceful in Vrindavan at that time, we decided to go to Nidaban. So we went to Nidaban. Nidaban wasn't all fenced off like it is now. And we went to Nidaban, and we went, and we decided, oh, we want to roll in the dust, you know? We want to get the mercy. And we were rolling, you know, like, you know, like a star. We had our, I think we had our heads together, our heads together. I don't think we had our feet. Anyhow, we, and we were rolling, we were praying. 
And then we thought, well, let's go over to the Rupa Samat and go to Yamad, because we knew Sheila Gurudev, Sheila Narayamaj was there. This was early in the morning. We said, maybe we can get a little darshan. So we went over to the Mod, and he was there, and he just happened to be going out, taking a few devotees with him on Parikama. Mm -hmm. And he invited us to go with him. And we went to Seva Kunj with him. We went to Radha Damodar. We went to Sringarva. Then we came back. And on the way back, it was so beautiful. He stopped at Srila Bhakti Vaibhapuri Goswami Maharaja's Mat, right across from Seva Kunj. And it was as if it had been planned, although it wasn't. He said, okay, now Puri Maharaj wants you to stay for breakfast. And we were like, wow, okay. So he left us there and he went back to the Mat with uh, Naveen Krishna, Madhav Maharaj, and we were there. It was so beautiful, you know, to see this. And Bhakti Vaibhav Puri Goswami Maharaj was so happy to have us. And he was feeding us, of course, all South Indian, you know, Idlis and all these things, you know, because that's their mood there, you know. And uh, I remember this, I was saying, because I didn't, I didn't know him really. I was in this guy, and I was saying to my friend, this is, prasadam is so good. It's so good. And he walks over to me very grave, and he said, all maha prasadam is very good. And I said, whoa, he's been, you know, it was so sweet, so sweet. And then we went, now, but this is just some tiny little mercy coming from rolling in the dust, you know, of Nidubhan, <clears throat> like this. So we should, uh, another time, because um, if we know from Srila Rupa Goswami's Utkalika Valari, the second verse of his Utkalika Valari is very beautiful. He's praying to Sri Vrindavan Dham. Rupa Goswami says, O Vrindavan Forest, was there ever anyone in this world who did not quickly attain supreme transcendental bliss by serving you. So he's telling us, if we serve Vrindavan, we will attain that supreme trans Paramananda. Paramananda, that's transcendental happiness. Therefore, I surrender to you and most humbly petition you. Be kind and personally disclose to me the best way to receive the darshan of my worship of the Lord, Sri Sri Radha and Krishna. So he's praying to Vrindavan Dham, like this. And always. And one time I asked Srila Narayan Maharaj, Gurudev, what is service to Vrindavan? Well, I asked him about this verse. <clears throat> I said, first of all, you should know that Vrindavan is a person. Vrindavan's a person. Like this. The trees and the flowers are her hair standing on in an ecstasy. Like this. And he started to describe like this. Then he said, and Radha and Krishna are having their velas there, all their pastimes there, in, on, you know, within Sri Vindavan Dhamma's heart, you might say. And he described one pastime. He said, one time, Radha and Krishna, they were sitting together. And Vrindadevi comes with a lotus flower and gives it to Srimati Radhika and says, this is a kamal, this is lotus. And then Srimati Radharani, to make the pastime nice, she pretends like she says, I don't know what a lotus is. This is a certain kind of mood, Mugdag, Mugdagda, I forgot the name of it, Mugda, something like that. Yeah, it's where she, you know, the, they know perfectly well what's happening, but they pretend like they don't. That's one of her bobs. And so then some delightful pastimes are going on. And so Gurudev said to pray to Vrindavan, to be able to remember these pastimes, and for these feelings to come in our hearts, this is seva to Vrindavan. Not just sweeping. Of course, he did tell me always to go out and sweep. He told me to go to all the holy places and sweep. He did tell me that. But the real, real seva is to remember the pastimes, to pray for these feelings to come and these darshans to come in our heart. That is actually service to Vrindavan. So we should, especially during Kartik, um, yeah. So the essence, oh, and there's one other thing that we should do that the Gaudiya Vaishnavas, as you know, we always do. We offer a ghee lamp 
every evening to our Takerjis. Agilam. We should do it every day, every all year long, but at least during Kartik we should do this. We should do. And our very essence should be is mm, mm, is to be how to awaken the desire in our heart for only wanting service to Srimati Radhika's heart. That should be the aim and object of our of all of our activities, of everything. How how can I attain service to the Lotus Seed of Srimati Radhika? How can I do this? And we should also feel that we're very fallen. And we should feel, because it's true, I haven't attained it yet. I haven't attained it. So please, please help me to actually become successful. And the reason why I've mentioned this is because in this part, now turning to the um, Madhurya Kadambani, we're talking about this is very elevated. I'm not really qualified to talk about it. But we're talking, Srila Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur is talking about the attainment of this goal. And what are the actual moods of the Premi Bhakta who actually has, is attaining Prem and attains Prem. It's so beautiful. So beautiful. This is the actual goal. This eighth chapter a shower of Madhuri Kadami is the goal. He's revealing the goal. What are the actual moods in the heart? You know, how, what was his practice like this? But before we actually move on into text four, we're going to finish off a little bit in text three, which is a very interesting, um, interesting part of Madhuri Kadamini. Because um, before this, last week, we were talking about the different uh, mad maduris, the different sweetnesses, you know, of Krishna that he reveals. First, it was his uh, his uh, uh, his beautiful form. Remember his form. Then his fragrance. Then his uh, then his speaking and his hearing. So many different, oh, so many qualities. So to finish this off, Shila Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur mentions that even apparent faults in Krishna are wonderful qualities. They're Madhurya. They're his Madhuris like this. So he mentions that uh, there are 18 faults as mentioned in the scriptures. And Sri Krishna, and sometimes even Ramachandra as avatars, they manifest, they charmingly, gracefully manifest these qualities. And then they become great attributes. They become, and they charm the heart of the bhakta, and they melt his heart, like this. And he gives references from the scriptures. So it's really beautiful. And this is all done, Srila Vishal Chakravarti Thakur says, by the Kripa Shakti. The Kripa Shakti, actually, somehow, by her mercy, she, she requests, actually, Bhagavan to manifest these qualities, these faults, out of his inherent nature. He actually has everything. How could there be anything he doesn't have? So she, and then they get transformed into wonderful qualities. They give, what, it, what do these do? They nourish the devotee. They increase his astonishment. Because this one part of Prem, Prem Ras, Ras, is astonishment. It's called Chamatkar. Chamatkar if there's no chamakar, if there's no astonishment, there's no praying, there's no wrath. Like this. Because it's ever fresh. You know, if it's the same all the time, you're going to get bored. It's really like the material. was the same thing over and over and over. Oh, they went to the forest. They, they, the cows went with them. You know, how many times do you want to hear that? <laughs> you know, see, but it's always Krishna's ever new, ever fresh. So all of his qualities are ever fresh and ever new, and they give astonishment. The devotee is completely astonished and completely attracted. He's nourishing. He says, how much Krishna has so much affection for me, this bhaktivatsalya, right? And so then he has his playful pastimes. And these faults, apparent faults in Krishna that are wonderful, they become sweet and they nourish his pastimes. And without them, 
his pastimes won't be so nourished, they won't be so full, and in a full, then his nature is the absolute truth as the Supreme Personality of Godhead will not be complete. So how can this be? Like this. So I was going to read a few of the examples that are given from the Shastras. The first one is from Srimad Bhagavatam. 10th Canto, 13th verse, uh, wait a minute here, 16, wait a minute, no, it's 10th Canto, must be, anyhow, 10, 13, 16. Mm. So the quote is, after this, upon not seeing the calves and the cowherd boys in the bank of the Jamuna, Sri Krishna began searching for them throughout all the forests. Of course, this is in the Brahma Mimohan Leah, mm -hmm. right? So this is an example of the fault of illusion. He becomes illusioned. Mm -hmm. But it's so sweet. Yeah, the devotees say, oh, how sweet. Krishna's searching, searching for the cows. How sweet. Like this. Another one is from the, they're all from the 10th canto. No, no, not all of them. This one's also from the 10th canto. Once Sri Krishna tired from wrestling with the cowherd boys, laid down in the shade of a tree on a bed made of soft leaves. He rested his head on the lap of a cowherd boy and fell asleep. What is this? This is, there's three faults here. One is, they call it lassitude. That must be laziness, exhaustion, and too much exertion. These are faults. But it's so sweet. Too much exertion. That's why he got tired. Mm -hmm. He was just playing too much. He was playing and wrestling and they won't stop. Even we heard before, Mother Yashoda comes to try and... First she sends Rohini to try and come and bring the boys home for lunch mm -hmm. or dinner. And they just run away. They keep playing and playing and playing and playing. Finally she has to come and trick them. So it's like this. Mm -hmm. Too much exertion. Mm -hmm. So they get tired. Well, why is she? The Supreme Personality of God, like Lord Narayan, probably never gets tired. You know, like this. But Krishna gets tired. He's so sweet, you know. He gets tired. <laughs> you know? It's human like pastimes. Human like pastimes. And he goes to sleep. Okay. So now this is also from the 10th Canto. Sri Baladev and Sri Krishna returned to their mothers crawling as if bewildered and afraid. So they must have seen something really scary, you know. So here we see bewilderment. But it's so sweet, right? The little babies are crawling along. They're really afraid. Who knows what they saw? Okay. Oh, so um, now the next one is the motherly gopis approached Mother Yasoda and said, Your son releases the calves untimely before they're being milked, before they've been milked. And we become upset, and when we become upset, he simply laughs and chuckles. So this is an example of lolita, restlessness, like this. And then another one, Vanamali, Sri Krishna, who wears a flower guy, honors his cowherd friends with eyes restless with pride. So he, well, we know he becomes proud. This is, he, he pride is one. I'm just mentioning these because this is what Srila Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur has, has emphasized. And there's another one here. This is, oh, this is an example of envy. When Indra sent forth torrential rain in an attempt to destroy Vraj, Sri Krishna said, I shall crush Indra's inflated false ego which causes him to stupidly think himself to be the lord of the three worlds. So this is envy. This is pride and envy. And then we also have anger. After eating dirt, Krishna said to his mother, Mai, I didn't eat dirt. They're telling lies. They're just lying. So he got angry. And also when he, when he killed Jarasunder, we witnessed he had dishonest speech at that time. Okay. Uh, okay. I'm not going to uh, mention all of these, but um, hmm. that gives us an example. There's many more here, but I think that's enough. Oh, here. 
Okay, the last one. Oh, twice born, I am controlled by my devotees and have no independence in their presence. This is a statement of dependency on others, and that's actually a fault. But this is Krishna's topmost quality, depending on others, you see, on the love of his devotees. He becomes completely controlled by them and dependent. He's completely dependent, as we know, on Srimati Radhika. Without her, he cannot live. There's so many times we see that when Srimati Radhika is in Man, right, she won't talk to him. And he is so, he, he, he wants to give up his life because he's tried. He sent Brinda, he sent Subal, he sent Kornamasi, he sent everyone, and she will not break her pride. She will not. And finally, somehow or other, he goes himself in the dress of what? The daughter of a, a gardener, you know? And uh, he comes with his basket, you know? And Lalita Vishaka says, oh. He's bribed them. He's met with them before and he's bribed them. So, so they know what's going on. So then he comes in. Shivaji Radhika says, you're so beautiful. So I have never seen you in Brudge. He says, well, I live, on the, you know, I live over here and I'm the daughter of a gardener. She says, well, what can you do? So he says, I can manicure the toenails. I can comb your hair. I can do so many things like this. And of course, as soon as he touches her to do comb her hair. She understands, because no one can give her that kind of happiness simply by touching. And she smiles. And then Krishna, he sees, oh, this is what I wanted. Everyone's asked, this is, he's dependent on her. He's not, he's not dis Atmaram, self, self dependent. Yeah, like this. So these particular faults, they, um, they nourish his lila velas, like that. And they show his special favor, Bhakta Vatsalya, and they also um, make his pastimes complete. Without them, his pastimes would not be complete. This is the opinion of Srila Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur and Srila Gurudev's commentary here. And Srila Gurudev says that when the devotees, they actually, they, they realize these pastimes, including the faults, and how complete is what, they become so astonished and their heart completely melts. Like this. 100. So, I haven't experienced this, so I can only repeat what I've heard. But this is what we, I know myself, I get really tired of like just, um, what do you call it, uh, intellectual knowledge, right? Because I can pray, I can do so many things, but it gets really boring after a while in one sense, you know? It's like there's no, so I know myself, I'm praying one day, when will my heart melt? My heart, so I can feel this, so I can realize this, even to some sh tiny degree, even the level of Ruchi, you know, the level of Shakti, please, you know, because I can, I've read everything. I've been everywhere. Yeah. But the heart is not melting yet, isn't it? So we're just really, really begging, begging Sri Guru and the Vaishnavas, Begging Radha and Krishna, begging Mahaprabhu, please, Bhava Bindu, Bhava Bindu, one drop of Bhav. When, oh, when will I become qualified to receive Bhava Bindu? Premadan, Seva Mrita Dham. When, when, when? You know? But at this stage that we're in, the place I'm in, Sadhu Sangha, Anartha Navriti, you know? Bhajana Kriya. It's explained by Srila Gurudev, it's a difficult stage. And it's even dangerous. Because what happens is that the spirit soul is, wants happiness. The conditioned soul wants happiness, right? So because the conditioned soul is not necessarily experiencing so much transcendental bliss at this stage, he becomes attracted again to material happiness. Because he wants happiness. He wants excitement. You see? 
He wants these. He wants astonishment. So at this stage, we have to be very careful that we keep high-class sadhu sangha. And they will always remind us of the simple teachings in Bhagavad Gita. Nectar in the beginning, poison in the end. This is material sense gratification. Be careful. Be careful. Don't. Don't let Maya trick us. Don't go for it. Don't. Somehow, tolerate. Tolerate the boredom, the hard heart. Tolerate. Just tolerate. And believe the descending Shabda Brahm coming through the Shastras, coming through our Guru Parampara. Believe it. There is transcendental happiness. It's a different kind of happiness. And this is eternal happiness. Just just understand that if you control yourself, if you follow the instructions, and we do get some happiness. It's not like we don't. We would not be able to, to practice if we didn't get some kind of happiness. It wouldn't be impossible. Even when you first come, sometimes it's, there's a lot of happiness comes because we have so much relief from material suffering. But then after a while, sometimes it's a little bit more difficult, right? Yes. So at that stage, we have to be very, very cautious of our association. And we have to have faith. Faith in the words of Sri Guru and the Vaishnavas, faith. Okay, if I just sacrifice, just sacrifice my pizzas, my chocolate, my uh, trips to the Bahamas, my needing to climb the mountains and be out in fresh air and and, uh, you know, all the different uh, Maya tricks are, oh, that handsome man and that beautiful lady, you know, like this. She offers so many attractions, right? She's clever. And she's more powerful than we are. So we have to have some, what? We have to have uh, protection. We have to have help. And that is the sadhus. They are so strong. They can liberate a whole universe. So they can easily protect us. And it's actually Radha and Krishna, who are Istadev, who are, they protect everyone, they maintain everyone, isn't it? This is surrender. And their representatives, they protect and maintain. So we have to understand, oh, Srila Gurudev, Srila Prabhupada, Rupa Goswami, Sanatana Goswami, we pray, please, please let me feel your protection, let me feel your maintenance, let me somehow follow your instructions and use my intelligence so that I don't get tricked by Maya. Going Because if I get tricked by Maya and I go for this kind of happiness, I'm going to get stuck in the material world, even if I'm chanting Hare Krishna, and go round and round and round and round. Because Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur has said, the only way we can get out of the material universe, the only way, anyone actually, well, how? It's in an article that he wrote called, I think it's called Raising the Temple of the Bhagavad. It was in one of our harmonists. He says, only by following Sri Rupa. This is the only way. We have to follow Sri Rupa. Because she's the one that is the orig origin of the bhav. That is our bhav. That's, uh, a that's a potential in our heart. And only by... The bhav coming from her, coming down through our guru parampara, coming down through our rupanuga uh, guru, that our bhav will be awakened and will be, become manifest. There's no other way. Lalita can't manifest it. Radharani can't manifest it. Krishna can't manifest it. Maya can't manifest it. Only the rupanuga Godiva, because that's, it's like we've given that example so many times, you know, it's like, the rain from the Swati Nakshatra it hits the oyster and a pearl is manifest. So only when the Ba from someone who has it comes and mixes and awakens our Ba, then, and then if we follow the instructions, that's the water that nourishes it, isn't it? Because it can become manifest and then it can just shrivel up and die because we don't water it. It's because we're talking now about a Bhakti Lata about a vine of devotion, right? And what's that? 
following the instructions of Sri Rupa as they come down through our Guru Parampara, hearing, chanting, remembering, you know, all the practices of bhakti. Following Kartik Brat to our best of our ability, making Kartik one of the most precious parts of our life. Making the lotus, attaining the dust of the lotus feet of Srimati Radharani, our aim and object. So we have to get the mercy of Sri Vrindavan Dham, of Srimati Radhika. Because in Vrindavan, there's the footprints of Radharani. This is her foot dust, and the dust of all of her associates, her beloved Krishna, Lalita Vishaka. It's permeated with what? With Bhav. With Brajbhav, what is that? Selfless, selfless service for the pleasure of Radha and Krishna. Rag, rag. Rag means an unquenchable, 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 insatiable, in, I can't say it. Insatiable. Insatiable, insatiable, insatiable desire to make Krishna happy. Because this is why we're serving Srimati. We want to make Radharani. But why? Because Radharani is making Krishna happy. It's not that the Manjaris um, don't love Krishna. They love Krishna. They're also, they're, it's Krishna praying. We're talking, it's not Radha praying. It's Krishna praying. But their love is so selfless. So selfless. They're so selfless that they think, oh, if he enjoys with me directly, that's a lower happiness for him. He'll be more happy if Radharani is with him. So my desire is to serve Radharani, bring Radharani to Krishna, and then he'll be the most happy. So it's not that they don't have Krishna praying, they do. But it's so, it's a top more selfless. And they have no other desire than to just be immersed in this ocean, nectarian ocean of service to the lotus feet of Srimati Radhika. And this is our potential. This is our aim and object. This is the goal of our life. Like that. So now we're going on to text. I got a little sidetracked there. <laughs> we get, we're going on to text four. I don't think we'll be able to finish shower eight before Karti getting out. Hare <laughs> Krishna. So now in text eight, uh, Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur he starts describing the really amazing, um, uh, how do you call it, the states of ecstasy of the prem, Premi Bhakta. He starts describing what he's feeling, what's actually his, his darshans with Krishna. So the first thing that he talks about is how, after Bhagavan, we've heard Bhagavan has, has given him darshan, right? And he's seen his form, he smells his fragrance, and he's completely absorbed and um, attracted by Krishna's sweetness, right? So now, Bhagavan Krishna, what does he start doing? He starts glorifying the devotee. He starts glorifying the devotee. The devotee is so, this, is, this, this, this astonishes the devotee. Because he's so humble, he does not feel like he deserves it, like that. So, at this time, Krishna says to his devotee, "Can you imagine? This is Krishna, and this is the we're talking now about the first darshans the devotee, the prema bhakti has when when prema is finally maturing, the beginning of the maturing of prema. Because after one becomes nityasiddha and one has entered lila, then." So many times one has darshan of Krishna. But we're talking about the first time. The first time. This is so astonishing. And that's why the devotees, so, of course, he's ever fresh, so Radharani's always astonished. She always feels like she's never seen him before. So, <laughs> Prem is something beyond our wildest imagination. So, anyhow, Bhagavan says, O oh, best of my devotees, for so many lifetimes, he's expressing his gratitude. This is Krishna. He's grateful to us. Just like Radharani when he was talking about Goga. She's so grateful. Oh, you've come to me. You know? Oh, best of my devotees, for so many lifetimes you have abandoned your wife, your home, your wealth, and so forth for me. You've given up everything for me. 
only to serve me you have endured so many miseries, cold, wind, hunger, thirst, pain, and disease. You totally disregarded the insults of others and maintained your life by begging. So it's not that Krishna doesn't see what we're going through. Sometimes we wonder, you know, really, you know, I'm suffering so much, you know. I have no money. My wife has left me. You know, my mother hates me. You know, my father is just giving, you know, all, all these things, you know. And, you know, everyone's insulting me. Especially in the West, if you're a devotee, you go out, you know, especially, you know, they might even spit on you or whatever, you know. Hare Krishna. You've been, so Krishna is seeing this. He has seen. And what does he say? Unable to repay you. I have become indebted to you. I'm completely indebted to you. For you, any kind of material, um, uh, even uh, if you became the emperor of the whole world, of the heavenly planets, the position of Lord Brahma, anything, nothing in the material world is suitable for you. I can't give you anything material. No position, no wealth, nothing. I can't give it. Thus, even though I'm unconquerable, Today, you have conquered me. I am conquered by you. And then he says, this is the most amazing part. He says, I am completely dependent upon you and your love and affection. And we can see that when we read the Bhagavatam, when we read, especially 10th Canto, Krishna, his life and soul is the love and affection of his devotees. He can't live without him. He can't live without Srimati Radhika. He cannot live without Mother Yashoda and Nanda Baba. He can't live without Sri Saka Subal Saka. He cannot. He can't, he can't leave any of his devotees. He's called Bahunista because he can't leave any devotees. The devotees are Ekanista. Why? Because they only have Krishna. They can leave their husband, they can leave everybody. And their only focus is Krishna. But Krishna, he cannot give up any devotee, anyone, you see, like this. So, as Krishna is glorifying his devotees, um, so these kind of uh, tender and compassionate words that Krishna speaks to the devotees, they come, again, the devotee's heart is melting and melting and melting. <coughs> He's astonished. His astonishment gets more and more and more. And Krishna, why is he feeling so indebted? Because the only thing he can give to the devotee is his service. That's it. They don't, they're completely selfless. So he's indebted. I can't, I don't have, all I can do is give you service to me. And see, then he becomes indebted because you're serving me. Then I have to serve you like this. This is Ras. This is, um, this is Prem. It's not just the devotees serving Krishna. It's Krishna serving the devotees. It's a relationship. One time Gurudev was asking someone, because in the song, Yashomati Nandana Brajabada Nagara, he said, what is the difference of, what's the definition of Nagar? And everyone's kind of going, well, beloved or lover or whatever. He said, no. There's Nagar Krishna and Nagari the gopis, especially Srimati Radharani. And Nagar and Nagari means Nagari is serving Nagar. Nagar serves Nagari. If they're not both serving, there's not Nagar and Nagari. And it's, of course, in amorous pastimes. It's in Madhurya Ras, Nagar and Nagar. Nagari is amorous seva, like this. But they're both serving. And sometimes the uh, Vishaya, the one who's the object of service, becomes the ashraya, you know. And sometimes the ashraya becomes a vishaya. Sometimes Krishna is serving Srimati Radhika. Now, how can this be? How can this be? He's God, right? He's God. And we hear, you know, in the bhavs, in, uh, what is it, uh, vibhav, you have ashraya and vishaya. And vishaya is Krishna. He served. And the ashraya is the devotees serve him. So what is this? But no. In praying. They, they change their roles. 
And Krishna is, what is he doing? He's massaging the feet of Srimati Radhika, falling at her feet like this. And the Manjaris are really, they're only happy when that's it. They're not happy when she's mm. serving his feet. They want to see him serving her feet. This is the, the secret in the heart of the Gaudiya Vaishnavas. When there's a, a, a contest, you know, when there's a, a water fight, right? Krishna and Radharani, and they're in, a, a, what do you call it, Radhakun. They're having a battle, a water fight, right? They're really having a water fight. It's lotuses, they're fight, and they're water and everything, and they're all, you know, like this. But if Krishna wins, the Manjaris are very unhappy. But if Krishna loses, then they're very, very happy, and they're assisting, and they're just bombarding Krishna. And Krishna's most happy when he loses, not when he wins. Even though his friends and all the birds are, oh, Jai Krishna, Jai Krishna, he's not so happy. He likes to also see Vrindavan Eshwari, the queen of Sri Vrindavan, Srimati Radhika, the queen of his heart, she wins. <laughs> right, like this. So this is what we're talking about here. And this is the beginning for those who are just attaining praying. First, they hear these amazing words from Krishna that they can't believe. He's saying, I'm indebted to you. They can understand when he says he's indebted to Radharani and the gopis in the 10th canto. Okay, that's understandable. But me? Mm -hmm. Me? He's indebted to me? That is the, because the devotee at that point is humble. True humility has arisen in his heart. True humility. Like this. It's not, and humility and prem are side by side. As much humility you have, that's how much prem you have. Prem, humility, like this. So then Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur describes the devotee's humility when he's glorified by Bhagavan, by Krishna. And um, this is actually quite beautiful. So, so then the devotee says, he prays. O oh, Prabhu, O oh, Bhagavan, O oh, Ocean of Mercy, dragged by the current of this dreadful material existence, I am, he doesn't say I was, he says I am. So he's still seeing himself caught in the material whirlpool. I am caught in the whirlpool of suffering and am being devoured by crocodiles. He does not see that he has praying. Seeing this, compassion arose in you. And, cause you, and this is what he says, your butter-like heart. You have a heart like butter. And that butter-like heart, it has melted, seeing my unfortunate situation. Also, it's, uh, I think, it's, yeah, in Stava Mala, Rupa Goswami talks about Srimati Radharani and begging her not to forget him and to bestow her mercy on him. And he also says, your heart, which is as soft as butter. This is just one of the only ways to describe the heart of Srimati Radhika and Sri Krishna. Their hearts are, actually their hearts is described also by Srila Rupa Goswami, that their hearts, butter-like hearts, flow to the most fallen. And the most fallen, even though they know they don't deserve it, but how could they not want this praying, how could they not want that? Because it's so attractive. Even though they know, so we're hearing, they, we're not qualified, but it's all I want. It's all I want. So, oh, and this is so beautiful. He says, oh, Bhagavan, you appeared before me in the form of Sri Guru. And Sri Guru cut my ignorance and my lust it's just like your darshan, like the Sudarshan chakra, it severed all the crocodiles that were making me suffer and saved me, saved me. Sri Guru, you in the form of Sri Guru. And with the desire to make me a maidservant at your lotus feet, you had the syllables of your mantra entered the pathway of my ear and remove all my pain. 
so we should not be neglectful of our mantras. This is a mercy coming from Sri Guru. The mantras are non-different. Sri Guru mantra is non-different than Guru. Gore mantra, not different than Gore. Kam Gayatri, all these, they are non-different. So we should be very careful when we do our mantras. And then he says, this is, what, this is what has brought, he's so humble, he's saying, through my repeated hearing, chanting, and remembering of your divine names and qualities, you purified me. So he doesn't say, I purified myself by hearing and chanting. Or I got, he says, you purified me. You yourself, by giving me the mantras and the Harinam mantra, and by me doing this, I have become purified. Oh, Prabhu, you, you, he's saying to Krishna, you taught me the art of rendering devotional service to you. How? By granting me the association of your devotees. Like this. But he says, this is his humility. And this is someone, Premi Bhakta, saying, this is the thing, the Premi Bhaktas actually are humble. We see in the, we see in the Harina Sakura, we see Rupa, we see everyone that we read in the Chaitanya Chaitamrita and Shri, they're all so humble. He says, nevertheless, because I am unfortunate, foolish, and most degraded, I could not render even a day's service to you. I haven't served you at all. When will we feel it? <laughs> Hare Krishna, I haven't done any service. Still, even though this most wicked person is punishable, instead of chastising me, you are making me drink the unlimited nectar of your sublime darshan. It's unbelievable. Really. Because we're never qualified, really. The only way we get qualified is when they give the qualification, isn't it? So, and then he says, and yet you're saying to me, I'm indebted to you. How is this? Are you mocking me? Are you mocking me? <laughs> what should I do now? I've committed unlimited thousands and millions of offenses. So for me to pray for pardon would be nothing but taking shelter of impudence. Certainly my offenses are incalculable. Because if you think about all the unlimited lifetimes we've been here, yeah, it's pretty, pretty bad. <laughs> So then he says, moreover, the powerful influ influence of my persistent offenses is such that even now I'm going on. He says, so let me suffer for the offenses still remaining. I will not pray to be pardoned. That's the level that comes. And Srila Gurudev has said, out of his intense humility, the Premi Bhakti does not beg for forgiveness. And he doesn't act, and he actually asked the Lord to punish him. Just punish me. I deserve to be punished. What a consciousness. I don't pray for that. I pray, please forgive me. No, sorry, Bo. Please. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And at this point, the devotee is so stunned and bewildered, he doesn't actually know what to do because he's just thinking about all of his offenses. And the Lord is telling him how he's so indebted, how he's, you know, how wonderful he is, how he's controlled him. So then what happens? The devotee, he says, and not only that, I've had the audacity to compare your divine form to material objects. When I was praising you and praying to you and making poetry, I would say, Oh, your body is like a fresh rain cloud, like a blue lotus, like a sapphire. Your face is like the lotus, your lotus, no, your lotus face is like the moon. Your lotus feet are like freshly sprouted leaves. Thus, I have declared that burned mustard seeds <laughs> are equal to the golden Mount Sumera, or that fried chickpeas are like wish-fulfilling jewels, Chintamani. Or that a jackal is equivalent to a lion. See? 
In this way, I am such a fool and I've committed so many offenses to you in trying to glorify you. Even this I haven't done properly. And so in doing this, trying to praise you, I've just declared what a fool I am. And I, and I thought that my poetry was so wonderful and so brilliant. I was so proud. See, amazing. This is Premi Bhakta. Premi Bhakta. So then... <laughs> so then he makes a comparison. He says, no, no, actually. Where was that? Oh, this is a quote from the Krishna Karnamrita in the purport. And it says, um, this is, so this is Bhivabhangala Thakur. Oh Prabhu. So he's the Premi Bhakta. He's saying, oh Prabhu, with the same feeling that we're just hearing from Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur, oh Prabhu, if you wish to hear my response, please listen. Poets, oh, so then Krishna had says to the devotee, well, how is it that all the old poets, they were praising me? How is this? How is it? So he says, if you wish to hear my response, please listen. Poets of old have seen your beautiful form in their deep meditation. They have compared your face to the moon and the lotus only because they were limited by their poetic ability. Truly, the moon is nothing but a camphor lamp suitable for circling your lotus face in Arctic and then being put to one side. That's how foolish. So then what happens? At this point, Bhagavan, Krishna, he manifests his dham and all of his devotees all of everything to the devotee. He manifests Vrindavan Dham. He manifests Srimati Radhika, gives Darshan, the Jamuna, Govardhan. Because he's so, what else can he give? He can't give anything. So he manifests the Holy Dham and all of his, his, his personal associates, all his near and dear ones. So, and then what happens? <laughs> He disappears and he makes everything disappear. So the devotee is distraught in separation, completely distraught in separation. He has got, and then it's all lost. It's like attaining that chintamani and then you lose it, you know, like this. And Krishna explains why he does this. Why does it, and I won't read because there's pages of how he feels at this time. It's, it's quite a lot. How the devotee actually feels. He feels so intense separation. But Krishna explains in the Shrima Bhagavatam to the gopis, he says, My beloved Sakis, just as a penniless man after losing wealth gained by providence becomes so engrossed in thoughts of that wealth that he forgets all else. Similarly, to facilitate my worshiper's continuous meditation on me, I do not immediately reciprocate or give him my darshan. So it's just to intensify our eagerness, to make it more and more, and so that there's such an intense thirst. And as Srila Gurudev has explained, divine madness in the devotee's heart. He becomes mad, completely mad. And what do they say? Thus his life has attained success. This is the topmost perfection and success of life, is to attain this eagerness and this madness, this premananda in the heart. And then what happens? The devotee actually, even though he's in such intense separation, he never actually loses sight of Bhagavan. This is the thing. Because he cannot be separated, even for a second, just like the gopis. Krishna's there. Even though he has disappeared, still he's there. And if you read the commentaries of Srila Vishnath Chakravarti Thakur for the gopi Geet, in his commentaries, the gopis are having conversations with Krishna, getting upset. Why you aren't coming? Why? You? And then Krishna said, well, why? You know, they're... Because Krishna's actually there. It's their mind talking to Krishna like this, you see? So in this divine madness, Krishna's actually there. So even though there's meeting and separation, the separation is also meeting, and the meeting is also like this. That's prema. Prema has two banks, 
meeting and separation. So then what happens? The devotee, even though Bhagavan has disappeared, the devotee thinks, surely Bhagavan will personally bring me into the realm of his pastimes and grant me loving service to him, praying service. Thus, his life is successful. And so this section en ends up uh, with the devotee's entrance into eternal pastimes, Nichalila. So at this point, the devotee is so eager and his madness has reached such a top that what happens? His material body just disappears. He doesn't even realize it because the material body cannot contain praying. Not possible. Not possible. So it just disappears. And his spiritual body is fully manifest. And his spiritual body is his own personal mood of seva, prem seva. That's what our body will be made of. We won't have to worry about taking men. Oh, God, would be such a relief. Are <laughs> you Krishna? You know, it's, it's just everything is spontaneous. This is ragatmika, raganuga, rag, spontaneous. It's coming from the heart. We don't have to learn it, you know. So at that point, Krishna personally comes and escorts us to Goloka Vrindavan. The last part of this eighth chapter, which we'll hopefully read next week, uh, kind of goes deeper into this, uh, the more the philosophical aspect of it. But this is the actual um, lila of entering Nitya Lila. This is how the Premi Bhakta, his, his, his bhakti has matured and matured. It's gotten finally up. It had some leaves and finally got buds. Then there were flowers. Then the Prem came. And then Krishna came as that bumblebee and enjoyed and took the nectar from that, from the fruit like this. And the devotee, he leaves all this. But we forget. Actually, Bhaktivinoda Thakur has said, at this point, we forget all the past. We will not remember all the, all the things that we don't want to remember. They will be gone. Everything will be gone. It's actually an illusion because we're the spirit soul. The spirit soul, is, spirit soul is the reality. All this conditioning is just an illusion. It's like waking up from the dream. You see? We'll wake up. And when you wake up from a dream, you might for a few minutes remember a little something. So that's more like in the stage of Ruji, Ashakti, when we're starting to more. But in praying, it's all gone. Only for us, Gopi Bhav. Gopi Manjari Ba, that's all there is. There's nothing else. And but we do, even though everything's natural for us, sudden siddha, we will get trained. We go to the uh, to the sphere, to the planet where Krishna's having his pastimes, Pakat Lila, and we get trained by the Nitya Siddha Gopis mm -hmm. on how to perform proper seva. It is explained by Bhakti Vinod Thakur that. Uh, sometimes Sri Rupa Manjari will take us to Radha Kun and teach us so many things. Sometimes Sri Mati Radhika, sometimes Lalita. Okay, I think I've gone way over time. Hari Hari Vol, Vanchakapa Dhrivista, Kripa Sindhu Vivita, Patita Nam Pavanebio, Vaishnavebio, Namo Namaha. Who's going to say? <laughs> Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadada Sri Vasadi Gora Vakta Vrinda Sri Krishna Chaitanya